In this video, we're walking through several best practices to help you optimize your bubble app because performance can easily suffer when you don't build with efficient structures and designs. So these tactics will help you maintain a better user experience and scalable solution instead. The first thing you wanna do is understand how your application is currently performing. This way you have a benchmark that you can compare against as you start to make improvements. Now you can figure out how well your app is optimized by going over to the app metrics section of your editor and reviewing the various charts. This section of your editor visualizes your app's activity by breaking down how many workload units you're consuming over time and also which activity categories are the highest consuming ones. The key here is to start by addressing the activities that are the highest cost and highest frequency because reducing consumption there will have the quickest and biggest impacts on your app's performance overall. So for example, take a look at the category chart and drill down into the activity categories with the highest percentage of workload usage. As you break this down, you'll likely find obvious culprits such as large search operations, but you may also be surprised and find activity you didn't expect to see, such as a looping workflow that individually is lightweight, but if looping all day long without any delay can consume many units very quickly. By really understanding where the heavier parts of your app are, you'll see trends in your logic. And these metrics are here to give you different perspectives on that data. For example, the bar chart is just a sum of units over time, which you can filter by different timeframes. I highly recommend you look at bigger spans of time whenever possible, because the more data you're aggregating, the easier it will be to separate consistent activity from edge cases. A consistent activity would be something like a marketplace search feature, right? It's a core feature. You know that people are going to be using it every single day. Whereas an edge case could be something like a bulk import of data that you add to your app to update sources, right? Something that isn't really meant to be routine. Again, it's gonna be so helpful to understand how your app is currently performing first. That way you have a direction that you can follow and you're not just guessing at where to optimize your app. So go after that low hanging fruit first, come back and review your metrics, and then you can adjust from there you know, if necessary. Now let's talk about searching your application's database. This is one of the most common pieces of functionality you'll find in any bubble application. It's a native function, it's very powerful, it works very well, and it's a go-to reference to retrieve you know, data from your database. The problem is, is that it is also one of the most expensive activities in terms of workload consumption. Um, so it can very easily work against you if you're overusing it or you're not implementing it efficiently. The first thing you wanna do with searches is to keep all of your constraints on the server side as much as possible. That means adding constraints in the first filter window that pops up when you create your search expression. By having Bubble filter your search results on the server side, that means less data will be sent to the browser. And not only will that help with the page's performance, but it can also give you better data security. There are definitely times where you'll need to use client side filters, such as an advanced filter. These aren't bad necessarily. They're an option for a reason. You know, they can give you more flexible filtering options to create more sophisticated logic, but they can increase the workload unit consumption. So you wanna make sure they're the most efficient route rather than always defaulting to them. You also want to try and reduce searches as much as possible. There are many ways to retrieve data in Bubble, so see if you can find other pathways to the same information that doesn't always need to involve a search. It's really easy to just fall back to searches because they're always going to be an option, but that doesn't mean it's always the best option. Reducing and optimizing searches may mean relying on custom states more, on list fields more, or just reworking your data structure so that you can create more efficient pathways to the data that you need. The next best practice for optimizing your app is to reduce redundancies. You know, this is something that can very easily fly under the radar. If you have a, a single expression or a single element that you've designed, you know, individually, it may be very lightweight, but if you have, you know, unnecessary duplications, just repetitions, anything where things can multiply, um, especially if they can multiply very quickly, that can easily hurt your app's performance, slowing down pages and consuming more workload units than you really need. Look for any redundant searches in your page designs. Bubble is smart enough to only perform identical searches once behind the scenes, but don't form a habit of having the same instructions sent to Bubble over and over again. Leverage custom states and containers to help you consolidate your variables. 
If you have integrations with APIs, look out for any designs that have you making more calls than you really need. APIs can get really heavy really fast, especially if you're integrating with external data sources. So the last thing you want to do is have Bubble and the API connection do more work than necessary. Be very careful with functions, searches, and any other heavy activity inside of repeating groups and tables. Those elements are designed to multiply. So if you have a big repeating group or a big table, your workload consumption can spike very quickly, not to mention the speed of your page can drastically slow down. Look for ways to consolidate those functions and or data sources to minimize the work. Overall, by reducing redundancies, you'll also help yourself reduce any potential errors and help make things more consistent. The next best practice for optimizing your app has to do with the timing of your logic. You know, what we see with a lot of beginners on Bubble is that as soon as the page is loaded, they have everything executing all at once. Even if they don't need to access, uh, you know, the results of those actions or the data sources that they're trying to retrieve, you actually have a lot of control over when things are executed. And this can help make things efficient overall, improving performance. For example, you don't always need to set all of your custom states as soon as the page is loaded. If the state isn't relevant yet, wait until it is. Maybe the user needs to navigate to a specific group within the page or take a specific action. Wait until you need it, because if there's a chance the user doesn't involve the state during that page session, then you may benefit from a ripple effect of workload savings. Use conditions to help you control timing of activity as well, both on workflows and on visual elements. Conditions can dictate when a repeating group is populated, when a custom state is set, when an API call is triggered, when a plugin action runs, when a search is run on your database, right? You can create all of these different scenarios with conditions. Conditions can also help you cut things off way before unnecessary data is retrieved or background processes are run, especially if they're based on user roles. So take advantage of these capabilities to control the timing. If you need to check for updates within a third-party system, see if that external service offers webhooks. For example, payment gateways typically offer this. Webhooks are an incredibly efficient way of being notified of new events outside of your app in real time, such as new subscriptions or payment failures. This way, you don't have to set up any kind of recurring workflow in your app to constantly check for changes, using up more workload than you really need. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this helpful, we've put together a complete guide to help you figure out if Bubble is right for your app. You can check it out over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide. I've also put the link in the description below. As you can see, this guide walks through everything from pricing to performance, IP ownership, and more. Head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide to get immediate access. Let's talk about the next best practice for optimizing your app, and that is addressing your database structure. You know, your database has a huge influence in how the entire application performs, because every expression you create that points back to the database is only as efficient as the structure of that database. Imagine a well-organized bookshelf. The shelves are spaced evenly apart. Every book is easy to reach. The books are organized alphabetically by title or author, maybe even grouped by genre. A system like this makes it easy to find a book fast. Now, imagine a bookshelf with shelves way up high, out of reach. There's no order to how they're positioned on the shelf. Some of the books have their spine facing the wall, so we can't even see what the book is. This system makes it hard to find a book fast. No matter how many books you have or how many shelves, if you've got a poor system, the efficiency in finding the book you want is going to be poor as well. So when it comes to your app database and bubble, it's crucial you have an efficient structure so that any references to that database is as lightweight as possible. First, give yourself a consistent labeling system. This is more of an organizational tip to help you reduce errors in your work. Help yourself find things easily with short literal names for your types, fields, and option sets. Second, use option sets. While option sets aren't technically a part of the database, I'd say they're more database adjacent, they can help you take some of the weight off of the database. If you have a case for a preset list of choices, one that doesn't need to be customized by your users and generally one that isn't a list in the hundreds, store them in an option set rather than in a data table. Next, consider using list fields even if it means creating extra relationships between records. Sometimes the slight redundancy here can be worth the workload savings if it means eliminating entire searches. Now, list fields should be used with caution as a big list can easily increase the size of the record itself. Every app situation is different, so you'll need to find the right balance between 
relying on searches with constraints versus leveraging a list field to avoid the search. Your database structure is likely going to evolve over time. That's very normal. As you introduce changes, improvements, new functionality to your application, you may need to go back into the data types, fields, option sets, and introduce new relationships or maybe change the way things are organized so that you can have easier pathways to information, right? And this can also benefit other areas of your app, making it easier to create privacy rules, um, reducing searches throughout your designs. You know, many different things can really stem from your database architecture. So don't forget about it when you're looking at how to optimize your app. The next best practice to help optimize your app is to use styles. Now this is going to be more felt in the speed of your page loads than in workload consumption, but it's absolutely something you want to get in the habit of working with more often than not. Styles not only help you stay incredibly consistent with your visual designs and help you design things faster, but they're actually a performance helper. By organizing all of your common appearance properties as presets within styles, you're helping Bubble find all of those attributes from one central location. If you compare this to separate settings on each and every individual visual element, styles are a much more efficient system for Bubble to load those attributes. And the difference in page speed becomes more noticeable the larger your app is, especially apps with single page structures. Start by creating styles for the most commonly used types of elements in your page designs, texts, buttons, containers, things like that. And as you continue in your design, if you find yourself repeating the same visual properties over and over again, it's a good sign that you can create a style out of it so that you can save yourself some clicks in putting things together in the future. But again, you can also improve that page performance. The next best practice is to remove anything you are not using from your editor. Even if something is installed in your app or added to a page design and isn't actually seen by the user, if you're not using it at all, completely remove it because that extra weight can be pulling down the performance of your app. You could be increasing page load speeds. You could be asking Bubble to perform more data searches than are really necessary or perform more uh, calls to third-party systems. Eliminate anything that you're not using to keep your app as lean as possible, both on the front and back ends of your application. One of the first areas you can easily clean up is your installed plugins. Go through the list of plugins you've added to your app and uninstall anything you're not using. You'd be surprised how many plugins actually run JavaScript code behind the scenes just from being installed to your app, even if not implemented in any pages. If you have enough of these, they could be affecting overall performance. Next, go through your page designs and remove any workflows and visual elements that you're not using at all. These could be backups or copies, things that you may have phased out. These may be components that are triggering unnecessary workload consumption, even if they're not active in your user's experience. Next, address places in your logic where you can intentionally remove things not in use. For example, deleting uploaded files that no longer need to be stored by your app. Because deleting a record that references the file isn't enough to accomplish this. You actually have to run a delete file action in your workflows. Canceling any scheduled workflows that no longer need to run, such as an appointment reminder. So if the appointment was canceled, you no longer need to send out an email or a text message. Make sure that you actually canceled that upcoming workflow. Stop any recurring events or looping back in workflows if, again, they no longer need to continue running. You also want to delete any database records that are no longer needed to keep your overall database lean. Bubble also has an app optimization function that you can access from your editor settings to help you clear out any unused properties, deleted data structures, and more. And for our last best practice to help optimize your Bubble app, don't be afraid to integrate with third-party systems to help you with some heavy lifting. You know, some of the most sophisticated and complex applications that we've worked with actually involved integrations with multiple systems so that the work was actually spread out. This way, every individual component was more efficient because all of the logic wasn't focused in, in, in happening in one place. Sometimes using a third party to handle logic that doesn't need to happen in your app can make a big difference. For example, relying on your payment gateway to manage all subscription logic, like timing of rebills, sending payment reminders, managing customers, or even managing tax rates across different regions. If you need to integrate with the payment gateway anyway, make sure you're not duplicating logic or data for no reason. Another example is with external data sources that change frequently, such as exchange rates. 
Rather than maintaining a constantly changing database, use an API to communicate with an external system that's already doing all of that work. Another example is integrating with an email service provider to manage all things email campaigns, engagement activity, deliveries, and more. Unless your app is a new email solution, this is the kind of integration that should complement your app so you can focus on building your more proprietary features within your bubble application and, again, reducing the load. So overall, the key to optimizing your bubble app is to look for opportunities. Where are those redundancies? Where might things be bloated that can potentially be simplified, right? Every app is different. There are different priorities. Uh, you know, not every one of these best practices are going to have the same level of impact on all bubble apps. So this is very much something that you have to balance, you know, what is right for your application. All right. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the screen next will help you take things even further.